right, so we're back. A little MIA over the last uh, about 30, 40 days from doing a vlog. This is episode six. We're going to feature a restaurant at the beginning of each vlog going forward. And uh, today we are featuring Root and Bone, the corner of 46th and North College on the northeast side of uh, Indianapolis. Uh, this is a great spot. Uh, it's an up and coming neighborhood that's come back over the years. Um, just absolutely amazing restaurant here in Indianapolis. Scratch made uh, menu, uh, southern style. Fried chicken is absolutely to die for, the chicken and waffles. Uh, but, but check out this atmosphere. Great bar area, um, very comfortable seating. And uh, you can see the kitchen there in the back. Just, just a great atmosphere. So we love coming here, uh, dinner brunch especially brunch we came on brunch this saturday um, the biscuit appetizer two absolutely biscuits as big as your head with homemade jam um, fried green tomatoes southern style with a little bit of tomato jam and bacon on top of the pimento cheese um, the sweet teas homemade in store um, salads all incredibly fresh like i said the ingredients are scratch Everything's uh, just just incredibly fresh and delicious. Shot of the fried chicken. We had a large party that morning for our brunch, and so we got to see lots of different dishes. And um, just an absolute gem here in Indianapolis. Very popular place. It's always busy, and uh, we love coming here. So you get a chance to uh, to visit Root and Bone. It's uh, 46th and College. Check it out when you get a chance. So after a morning brunch at Root and Bone, we're gonna hit the Horseshoe in Indianapolis for a cash game session. Hoping that a 2-5 game is gonna break out at some point, but uh, a 2-5 game is just not taking off regularly. Uh, so we're gonna have to settle for 1-3 today. Uh, as we see how Bravo Live, see that that's all that's going. And uh, I hope that we get some good action here uh, this afternoon. And uh, wasn't able to play in the tournament didn't want a late reg so decided to play some cash today and uh, see how we run the 1-3 game here plays kind of like a 2-5 just really depends on the table so we're going to get at it here we go alright so we're here at the horseshoe and uh, we do have to sit down at the 1-3 game we buy it for 400 that's the max and we play a few hands Get, uh, get the six, seven of spades on the button. And we've got an action player in a three seat that's, he's a bit of a gambler, likes to, likes to put money in the pot. And uh, we see a very favorable flop after a $20 pre-flop raise, uh, three players, uh, and it comes queen, seven, six. So really favorable for, for us, obviously, especially with an action player out of position and uh, with us in position. So. We see a turn of a jack of hearts here. The pot's at $14. And three seat decides to check it this time. Um, really feel like I missed a bet. And uh, we obviously don't take down any more money. He shows ace king. And uh, we've got the winner. Um, missed a bet on that, uh, on that river. And uh, I, I really did regret it later when I look back at uh, my notes in the hand so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to fix that we're gonna have to make those those bets and squeeze every ounce of uh, value out of a hand especially like that so we're gonna carry on here to this very next hand um, similar situation obviously we're in late position we're at the cutoff this time and we get another very good playable hand especially in position um, the same two opponents which is, uh, is why I decided to, to show these. We get seven of clubs and ten of spades here in the cutoff. We've got 466 now effective after uh, taking out the last pot. We've got a straddle from the three seat. Um, he's been a little bit chatty. Definitely uh, wants to push the action at the table, and we're here to oblige. So let's see what we've got. We come to a flop of queen seven eight. Again, good flop for our hand. Three seat played the hand 
similarly to the first one when he had Ace King, and uh, really felt like, uh, except this time he didn't raise preflop, he checked his straddle, which was a little odd considering what he ends up having here. We turn a six, river an eight, uh, and he shows Ace King again, so. It's coming, it's coming. Let's get it in. All right, so this next hand, just gonna warn you, don't play it this way. <laughs> Especially in a 1-3 game. Um, pretty passive table overall, but uh, a couple action players. You know, there's about, it's a little over 3,000 on the table. Pick up Ace, King of Diamonds in the cutoff and I elect to just flat uh, thinking that the small blind uh, might have had a hand and uh, I was wrong uh, he did not um, in this spot so we're going to see a flop of ace queen nine the problem here is the big blind um, he again just flatted uh, the three dollars checked I should say his, his option didn't raise here and uh, so not quite sure why he didn't raise preflop with, uh, with the hand that he's got but uh, we get to the turn and it's a jack of spades pot's not $45 it's not over inflated or anything so I can get away from this uh, brings in the straights uh, there's two flush draws out there now I don't have either one, and uh, call the 20 to see the river, and uh, it's not a great river for us, six of hearts, and lots of options for this gentleman here in the big line, and he checks quickly and turns over ace queen, and uh, we get shown the bad news. Luckily, it wasn't a big pot, so we'll move on. All right, and this next one is the uh, start of something pretty special here. 9.34 p.m., uh, we pick up the ladies, the married man, so every once in a while, it's nice to see some pretty ladies uh, sitting at the table, and uh, got a couple of good ones here, queen of hearts, queen of clubs. We're going to take this one to the flop, and... Uh, Pretty uneventful. Uh, the pots, pot sixty-four dollars. It comes ten, ten ace. Turns a nine. We can check through to the turn, and uh, I'm pretty sure we've got the best hand at this point. However, the hijack player decides to put in a ten-dollar bet. Decides to just call. We get another flag. Get a little more money in there, and um, if he's got the ace, so be it. But really feel like we're good here and uh, it comes a brick on the river three of hearts a check and uh, he gives up so is the uh, the player next to me and uh, we take this one down so nice little $64 profit on this hand and uh, I'm on to the next so not much later we pick up at 9 48 p.m. we have a couple of the same ladies come back to visit us here at the table. We pick up Queen of Hearts, Queen of Clubs again. This time we've got 471 effective. We're in the low jack this time, so we're in late position. Um, I decided to limp here because I thought that the big blind was going to raise. He, he seemed like he had a pretty strong hand uh, as he was looking at his, at his hand, and uh, I was wrong didn't. We get another paired board flop here, the eight, ace, ace, and uh, I decide to lead out here for $10, and we get uh, we get a caller, and uh, the turn comes a six. Nothing exciting. There's a spade flush draw out there, the two aces. I lead out for 20 and uh, we get our opponent to fold, so the ladies treat us well here. We get through, and uh, we're going to go on. All right, so this next hand's a fun one. 
takes us back to February when uh, Robbie J. Lou played that Jack Four against uh, Garrett Adelstein. And uh, so we've got uh, we've got a version of that. We've got the Jack Four Hearts here. Uh, we're in the cutoff. I'll play just about any two out of uh, in position here, especially late. And um, we should punish the lumpers here uh, by raising. We don't. Uh, everybody just flats the three dollars, and uh, there's five players to the flop. It's fifteen dollar pot. Comes out two of hearts, three of clubs, four of spades. We flop top pair. Under the gun leads us off for ten dollars. The gun plus one calls. I call. Small blind and the big blind are both going to call here. Decent amount of money in their stacks. There's a really good chance that if we can hit a couple cards here, we can, we can make a little bit of money, uh, especially with uh, the straight draw out there. Uh, we get an absolutely huge card on the turn. It comes jack of clubs. Down sixty-five dollars in this pot, and we are absolutely loving this board. It checks around to me, and I bet forty dollars. Small blind has a little twinkle in his eye. He doesn't hesitate to put out the calling chips, and we built ourselves a nice little pot. Let's see what the river brings us, so we can see how much we can get in there. Two pair. Um, everybody else fold, and we're heads up here. Uh, we get an, another absolutely brilliant card. Incredible run out for us. Jack of Diamonds. We bowed up. We've got such a hidden hand here. Don't think the small blind will see it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think he has much of a hand here. He checks. So I decide to go for thin value and uh, just try to extract the amount of chips that I think I can get out of him. I make it $40 the $145 pot and as soon as I put it out he instantly mugs so we we don't take any more chips but uh, we do take down a nice, nice little pot and uh, we'll move on all right so we're going to go in the last couple hands of the evening we pick up king of clubs jack of spades here we are under the gun plus one raise it up to 15. It's been a pretty passive table for the most part with the exception of a couple players and spots. And um, we get two callers. Pots at $45. We flop top pair with a king and uh, a queen and a deuce. Pretty safe board. It gets checked through. Um, five of clubs on the turn. And uh, this is where the, uh, the, the hand picks up a little bit. The big blind decides to make it 65. Pretty large sizing here. Um, he's he's repping a pretty big hand, but he just flatted the 15. And really just putting him on a king. Uh, really don't think he's got that big a hand. I could have flopped a set. He's only got 104 total. Um, I decided to put uh, enough in to, to get his chips in there. And he, uh, he shows the bad news here with these king. Uh, clean run out, and uh, we value on ourselves. So, pretty disappointing uh, second to last hand that we play here, and uh, we lose uh, we lose the max to his stack, and he gets the most. All right, so we're gonna finish up with this last hand of the evening. Uh, I didn't hit the record button until we were into the hand. I'm under the gun. I straddle uh, to six dollars. That's the max. It's under the gun here at the Horseshoe Indianapolis, and uh, we pick up Ace Eight of Spades. We get four limpers, and we make it thirty-one to go. Try to eliminate some players that limped. Uh, we were not able to eliminate everyone, but uh, that's good. We got a couple of callers here, so going to a flop of 10 for 10 two spades beautiful flop outside the the paired board we've got a couple of players in here with us in the pots at 105 dollars we check to see where we stand here and it checks through unfortunately and uh, the turn card comes a beautiful two of spades for us so we make our flush and uh
can't really ask for a, a much better run out here on the turn. Um, we bet 60, and our opponent to our left goes into the tank for a good, I would say, minute or so, 45 seconds. And I'm not sure what he's thinking. If he's got a 10 here, we, we could be in some trouble, um, especially if he's got... Uh, a 10 and a, and, a, and a deuce or possibly even uh, the 4 but uh, it's very unlikely he called 31 pre-flop he most likely has a 10 at best and uh, we get the the jack of spades on the river which is a terrible card for us because it really doesn't allow us to get any more value out of the hand 4 spades on the run out uh, we bet 40, and he decides to fold, and uh, so we, we don't make any more money in this hand, but it is the last hand of the night, so we're going we're gonna to rack up here in just a second, and uh, we're going to finish out with a nice hand, and uh, cash out for the night, so nice little win, and we're going to move on, so thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, thanks again.